Hi, Leo. Welcome to your February 2021 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So recently I was doing videos about Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius, and I don't know if I combined them for your sign, but, I, you know, they're on my channel. You can check it out. And uh, I'm, I was just thinking about all of this Aquarius energy and how it's just loaded into one house. And this is just adding to it uh, in February. And I, it's, it's, it's an important uh, thing to say on the front end of things that this is a general forecast for Leo sun and Leo rising, but your exact degree of sun or rising will determine the uh, timing issues. So since I can't go into all of the, the different uh, particulars in that uh, area, I make these general forecasts and they can be helpful in a more like an overall type of way, an overreaching thing. Uh, so as the month of February begins, we have a Mercury retrograde that has just uh, taken effect in the sign of Aquarius the opposite sign to Leo. And that's kind of where I was going with all of this is that you have a lot of concentration in the seventh house of committed partnership. For some of you who are later in the sign of Leo, you may actually be still with sixth house energy that is more related to your work life or your day-to-day -day life than it is going to be relationship energy. But that will eventually come to your uh, area <laughs> sooner or later. So the Mercury retrograde uh, in the seventh house can give people a change of heart. Well, I shouldn't say heart, but you can definitely be think, uh, rethinking something that's connected to your committed partnership. So this could even be a divorce. I mean, you may decide, hey, I do love this person. I'm not going to go through with the divorce. The seventh house can be legal matter, so that also can connect with divorce situations. Um, so the other thing about this is that if you are someone who is speaking to a partner and there's a misinterpretation of what is said, that can certainly have its own chain of events. Anytime we have a Mercury retrograde, we should be prepared that how we communicate is distorted, um, that it creates it, uh, some snafus. But this is a very fast moving energy. Mercury only lasts in one sign for a few weeks, like three and a half weeks, and same with the retrograde. And so it's not like it's going to affect your life uh, or impact it very long. So the, the point being that it's more frustrating than anything else. And if you are dealing with a legal affair and something, they said, well, you didn't sign this. So now it's delayed. You just know. And you're like, okay, that's Mercury retrograde. But you can also be very careful if you have to sign documents during this time so that you, you know, make sure that the best outcome possible takes place. On the very first day of the month, Venus goes into Aquarius and Venus can bring money with her. Now, Venus rules two houses. It rules the seventh house, the house that it is uh, transiting in or entering on the first, which is the house of committed partnership. Uh, so, you know, which makes sense that it would rule that house uh, in the sign of Libra. And it also rules the second house of earned income in the sign of Taurus. So, because of both of these uh, rulerships, when we think of Venus we, and, and its influence, we can think of money and we can think of love. So in this case, um, we could be speaking about both. <laughs> uh, for, for some people, this may be some kind of money that is connected to uh, maybe money that you earn through clients. The seventh house can be one-on-one -on -one relationships. So if you've started a business and you've been kind of waiting for it to pick up, and maybe you've gotten a few sales here and there, this may be the time when you really connect with your clients um, and you start seeing that cash register uh, hum. 
this can be a great time for romantic relationships. Again, uh, speaking of the Mercury retrograde in the same area, could an ex spouse come back into your life or, or an ex long dis, um, why do I say long distance, long term, but it doesn't even have to be long term, an ex partner. This is the house of partners. So sometimes I say long term, like it has to be long term. It doesn't have to be, but it has to be committed, not just the fifth house stuff, dating and stuff like that. So that could bring a blast from the past. What you always have to remember, Libra, is that even if you still hold um, a torch for this person, and if you are just so grateful that this person has uh, deigned to grace your doorstep, and you have never gotten over this person, this is the time to really think about whether or not that person has changed. If they left you for somebody else, if they left you because, uh, you know, they have their own problems or whatever they want to say that the reason that they left, um, it's not enough for them to come back. They have to show that uh, something different has occurred. On the 11th, we have a, a new moon at 23 degrees of Aquarius. Guess where that is? That is in the seventh house. And um, by the way, I mean, Venus in that seventh can be um, money from some kind of a, uh, a lawsuit or something like that. New moon here, a new day. D new day, maybe a new chapter in your marriage, maybe a new, some people are deciding to commit to one another. This is the house of committing to a person. And uh, maybe there's a new day in that regard. So this is great for long-term relationships. I, why do I see and say that committed relationships? I keep saying long-term. No, committed relationships. On the 18th, the sun goes into Pisces and that's the next house over, which is the eighth house. This is deep stuff. So for, um, Leo, this is you really looking at yourself at a deep level. Now, for those of you who are going through some kind of, you know, upheaval in your, uh, com committed partnership, this may be a time of doing some psychological analysis. I mean, either with an actual therapist or, within yourself. This is the house of shadow work. And a Leo person may find it a little bit off-putting to actually engage in this because you may, I mean, I, I think in general that the, the, what we call the positive signs or the masculine signs, the air and fire signs, that introspection isn't like first and foremost on their minds. And I'm a Sagittarius and we're supposed to be the sages or what have you, but even sages, I think that, um, positive signs are very much about the outer experience. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're shallow, but it's almost like, Hey, you know, what's done is done. I don't want to dwell on the past. And I think that, you know, overall, that's a wise philosophy because it is absolutely true. But in terms of shadow work, this is something from the past that the person has not integrated into the, the whole of who they are. And so it really um, isn't something that you can just spiritually by, bypass. You know, you have to, you kind of uh, have to like lance the boil, so to speak in order to fully get rid of it. Because, um, you know, boils, tumors, wh whatever you want to call them, people say, oh my God, it's this thing. But actually, it's the infinite wisdom of the body to create these things because they're trying to prevent malignant cells from entering your body. They're keeping them apart from the main system so that you can function. Uh, but they may, you know, it's, it's full of yucky stuff and it may look unsightly. Uh, and so it's not something that you, you, you want to have for the rest of your life. You just, you just honor it for what it has given you, which is protection. That is what the shadow, the repressed 
emotions, memories, what have you, they give you protection. There, there's nothing within us that is working against us unless we see it that way. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been such a, a mind blowing experience to read about, you know, even E. coli, that, you know, these things serve a function and we say, oh my God, you know, E. coli, and that's so terrible. And it has a function. It's in our bodies. It's, um, you know, we say, oh, that's bad bacteria. There's bad and good bacteria, but they serve a purpose. Um, they, they have their own purpose, yeast, candida, all these things. So the, the, the point being that we, um, make peace with them. We're not trying to have it overrun our lives though. And that's what happens. We don't want an overgrowth of toxic material. And, um, and that tumor that grows and that, that isn't, um, dealt with, we want to always kind of free our systems, uh, in a, in a way that, that, um, supports us and not in something that is really just, um, doubling down. And so the, the point being that when you look at these things and you're going to have these transits, um, all going in this area, you'll be able to do that if you want to, you know, you have Neptune transiting here for years now, uh, Leo, and some of you may have felt that you've had your spiritual awakening during this time. I think since about 2011 or something like that. Um, and this may have brought a lot of new insights into your life, maybe even paranormal experiences. Um, and now this is the time to really like, if you've had a recent, a recent, um, breakup or anything that has made you question your life, um, questioning it from your own perspective, not from God, that person did this and that to me, um, is such a great thing to do. And it's giving you this, it's affording you this opportunity on the 20th, Mercury goes direct in Aquarius. And so kind of like settling that area of partnerships and legal affairs, uh, a document that maybe is redone, who knows how that's, this is going to play out for you. Um, but that is the opposite house. Uh, so that, that can be, and for some of you, this will be in the sixth house when it goes direct. And that might have some kind of relationship to your, uh, work life. Maybe you were trying to, um, maybe you even hear back from a place that you applied to in the past. And this is, you're, you're dealing with someone contacting you and you're like, oh man, I forgot I even sent a resume there, you know, which is always wild. On the 25th, Venus goes into Pisces. And this for you is that area that is very, um, cathartic, I think is a good way of putting it, but it's also the house of shared resources. So you could see some kind of movement here where there is some reason why, um, the finances of other people are affecting you. Again, if there's some kind of a legal matter, maybe this has to do with an inheritance. Maybe that's what the eighth house, the eighth house is a house of death as well. Death plus money equals inheritance. So, uh, that could be, maybe that was what the, the legal case was about. But, um, the eighth house is also the house of intimacy. So as I was speaking on, um, the seventh house matters. Um, maybe you're gaining communication skills with your partner and that involves intimacy, whether it's your sex life together. Um, you know, an example would be somebody having an affair. Now that, that that's kind of, I'm, I probably should, should shut up about that because we don't want to give this impression that, uh, oh yes, somebody is having problems in their sex life that it justifies going outside of the relationship. And that's not what I'm saying at all. But, um, sometimes people feel that their needs are not being met and they seek them out elsewhere. 
and they really do love their partner. I mean, I can see that scenario playing out. It just is not, I don't think that it's a good way of going about it. I think that it's much better just to talk it out. And if the other person doesn't want to hear it, then you say, well, I'm sorry, but it doesn't sound like you're willing to at least um, accommodate or even listen to my concerns. So how can we have a relationship under those circumstances? I don't know. Um, I just wanted to put it out there that um, people can misunderstand the feelings of other people in many different ways. An example is if a woman is pregnant and a man, you know, feels that she doesn't find him desirous, desirable anymore um, and totally misses, you know, the boat on the fact that she's pregnant or she's just given birth, doesn't understand what, how that may affect her. And is just thinking about himself and his own um, desires, but also his ego that feels kind of crushed. So being able to really maturely discuss, openly discuss these kinds of things at a deep level, and that means employing your emotions. And that's really the best way to convey to somebody why you feel the way that you do. Anyone who frames this kind of thing with, well, you know, I thought when I got married that I was going to be able to have da-da-da-da-da is coming from a place of entitlement and not really taking another person's feelings into consideration about like why they may be doing what they're doing. So I think that it's very important to to convey emotion when you're communicating to somebody that you really care for. So that may be um what is uh, involved here. So again, this could be money coming from money that you don't, from a source that you don't earn directly, even a gift. On the 27th, we have a full moon at eight degrees of Virgo. Virgo is a sign after you. Uh, Leo. So there's another, the money house, the second house of earned income. So that can be a raise at work. Maybe that's what that negotiation was all about with uh, Mercury retrograde is salary negoci negotiation. And uh, so that brings a boost to your uh, weekly income or bi-weekly income. This can be... Um, Really understanding your self-esteem at a deep level. The second house can be your self-worth. Isn't it funny? Net worth and self-worth. And your self-worth, you know, for Leo, it could be something completely different than what you thought. Um, you know, maybe this is you ending a job and you were attached, your ego was attached to whatever it was that you did and you realized it has nothing to do with it, that you are that you are. And that nothing is, um, you know, nothing has to be beyond your existence. You don't have to justify your existence to be, you know, more valuable than gold. You, you are that you are. And um, sometimes Leos get that reputation of being a show off and, Showing off can come in many different forms and like, look at the job I have, look at the money I make. And when those things are stripped away, if they are, I'm not saying that they are for you, but if they are, you get to see what it really means. So if you're coming off of a divorce and you, maybe you were living in the lap of luxury and now you're starting over again, but you have your dignity and that means more to you than all of that. And that kind of lesson is priceless. And so uh, if you, or, or maybe just the idea of getting divorced or, or breaking up with this partner makes you feel like a failure. And when you walk away from it, you realize that is just not the case. You're not a failure, that you are um, someone who deserves happiness and you deserve to be treated with respect. I think this has been a theme in recent tarot readings that I've done for 
Leo. So it really seems to go along with that. So in any case, Leo, I hope that this resonated. And um, if you would like to work with me, I am doing a, um, a special right now uh, for extended uh, natal chart interpretation, extended transits. So two hours at least in total. And usually I yammer on much longer than that. Um, and it's for a special price. And uh, the link for, for that reading, which is the deep dive, that's a package. And there's other types of readings I offer uh, is below. My website is rainamoonastrology.com. Thank you for listening so much. Have a great month. Take care. Bye.